Hi guys, how are you? I miss you so much. Hi Caleb, hi Todd, hi Julie, hi Liam, hi Harlow, hi Kayla, Jace, Brielle, Jack, Mia, Cal, and Cadence, I miss you guys. Hi Bella and Abby, hi Emma and Zymir, Carter, Sammy, Kingston, Gianna, Shiloh, Kellen, Kensley, Riley, Tristan. Hi guys, I miss you all. So happy St. Patrick's Day. I am sitting here with my shamrock. Isn't that a cute little plant I got? And it's been growing like gangbusters. So I thought it was fitting that I would do a read aloud for you guys. I'm going to go back to the beginning of leprechauns in late winter for you because it's been a few days since we read. Um, I'm going to read this to you. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to get comfy, snuggle up with your favorite stuffed animal or a blanket or maybe your dog or cat or bunnies. Uh, or maybe you are more comfortable if you're drawing. And grab a piece of paper, grab some crayons or colored pencils and just draw what you see while I read. Or yeah, just relax. There's nothing you need to do except relax and um, feel like we're back together during lunch and I'm reading to you. Okay, here goes. Leprechauns in Late Winter by Mary Pope Osborne. They can grow small or grow large. They can take what shape they choose. They go by us in a cloud of dust. They are as many as the blades of grass. They are everywhere. Prologue. One summer day in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, a mysterious treehouse appeared in the woods. A brother and sister named Jack and Annie soon learned that the treehouse was magic. It could take them to any place in history. They also learned that the treehouse belonged to Morgan Le Fay, a magical librarian from the legendary realm of Camelot. After Jack and Annie traveled on many adventures for Morgan, Merlin the magician began sending them on Merlin missions in the treehouse. With the help from two young sorcerers named Teddy and Kathleen, Jack and Annie traveled to places both mythical and real to do Merlin's bidding. On their most recent missions, Jack and Annie found four secrets of happiness to help Merlin when he was in trouble. Now Merlin wants Jack and Annie to bring happiness to others by helping four creative people give their special gifts to the world. They have already helped the first two. Now they are ready to find the third. Chapter One, A Beautiful Word. It was a chilly afternoon in late winter. Annie was doing her homework on the computer in the living room. Jack sat on the couch and stared at a blank page in his small notebook. He heaved a sigh. What's wrong, said Annie. I have to write a story for school, said Jack, and I'm stuck. Well, you'd better get unstuck, said Annie. Mom and Dad said we have to get our homework done before we go to the theater with them tonight. I know, said Jack, but I can't think of anything to write about. Why don't you do what you love to do, said Annie. Go outside and write down some facts about what you see then turn them into a story. Hey, that's a good idea, said Jack, thanks. He jumped up and grabbed his coat from the hall closet. Then taking his pencil and notebook with him, he headed outdoors. The early March weather was sunny, but cold and windy. Kind of like today, right guys? I hope you got outside for a little while. Jack looked around, then he wrote down some facts in his notebook. Old snow in yard, sun sparkling on sidewalk. You know what guys, I walked up to school today with the dogs there's still a pile of snow at school. Can you believe it? That's very much like March. Jack looked up again. The treetops swayed in the March winds. Jack started to write about them, but when he looked down at his notebook, he nearly dropped his pencil. On the page were two large fancy letters. T-K. Oh man, whispered Jack. He dashed back in the house and into the living room. Annie, look! Jack held up his notebook. Look at this! Annie stared at the page. Old snow, sun sparkling, nice. No, not that, said Jack, the letters. Annie looked at Jack like he was a little crazy. Uh, what letters, she said. Jack looked back at the page. They're gone, he said. It was a big, fancy T and K. T and K, said Annie. Yes, 
for Teddy and Kathleen, said Jack. The letters just appeared on the page when I was outside. They were really, really there, really. I believe you, said Annie. She jumped up from the computer. Let's go. Wait, I have to get my backpack from upstairs, said Jack. Forget it. Come on, the treehouse must be waiting for us, said Annie. Okay, okay, said Jack. He quickly shoved his notebook and pencil into a pocket of his coat. Annie grabbed her jacket. Mom, Dad, we're going to take a little break from our homework, she called. Okay, but make it short. We have to leave for the theater by 7, their dad called from the kitchen. We will, said Jack. Jack and Annie headed outside. They ran over the melting snow in their front yard and up the sun-sparkling sidewalk. They charged across the street and into the Frog Creek woods. They hurried between the wind-blown trees until they came to the tallest oak. High in the branches was the magic tree house. Their friends from Camelot, Teddy and Kathleen, were looking out the window. Hello, called Kathleen. Hi, shouted Annie, waving. Good trick with the magic letters, Jack called. Yeah, we thought you'd like that, said Teddy. I just learned how to do it. Annie grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Jack followed her. They climbed into the treehouse and hugged the young enchanters. So what's up today, asked Jack. Where does Merlin want us to go now, asked Annie. Merlin wants you to go to Galway, Ireland, said Kathleen. Ireland? Cool, said Annie. Morgan sent us to Ireland once before, to the ninth century, said Jack. Yes, well, this time you will go to Ireland in the 19th century, said Teddy. To 1862, to be exact. Your mission is to find an imaginative and creative girl named Augusta. Augusta doesn't know yet what her talents are, said Kathleen. She lives in a time when it's not easy for girls to explore their creativity. Your mission will be to inspire her so she can give her gifts to the world. What does the word mean exactly, asked Annie. Inspire. Tis a beautiful word, said Kathleen, her sea, sea blue eyes shining. It means to breathe life into a person's heart to make her feel joyful to be alive. That is beautiful, said Annie. You may need some magic to help you, said Teddy. From the corner of the treehouse, he picked up the magic trumpet that had helped them on their last journey. Only this time, Teddy handed the trumpet to Kathleen. She held the shiny brass instrument for a moment. Then she tossed it into the air. The trumpet spun like a whirlwind. There was a flash of blue light and the trumpet was gone. In its place was a thin silver pipe with six holes. What is that? breathed Jack. It's an Irish whistle, said Kathleen. She plucked the instrument from the air. When you face great danger, one of you must play it. It will make magical music, and anything the other one sings will come true. But remember, said Teddy, its magic will work only once. Right, said Annie. Thanks, said Jack. He took the Irish whistle from Kathleen and put it into his pocket. And did Morgan send a research book to give us information? Not this time, said Teddy. Morgan wants you to draw upon your own experiences in life to help you on this journey. No problem, said Annie. Jack wasn't so sure about that. He liked having a book of facts to help them. So how do we find Augusta, said Annie. It should be easy to find her, said Teddy. When you land in the country of Galway, Ireland, just ask anyone for directions to the big house. Hold on, Jack pulled out his notebook and wrote, County of Galway, Ireland, Augusta, big house. Got it, said Jack. But how do we get to Ireland in the first place if we don't have a research book? Point to the notes you just made and make your wish, said Kathleen. And when you are ready to come home, said Teddy, use the Pennsylvania book, just like you usually do. Got it, said Jack. Go now and help Augusta, said Kathleen. She needs you. Jack pointed to the words Galway, Ireland in his notebook. I wish we could go there, he said. Bye, Annie said to Teddy and Kathleen. Farewell, said Kathleen. Good luck, said Teddy. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still absolutely still. All right, I'll see you tomorrow for chapter two and maybe a little bit more. Have a great night, you guys. I miss you so much, but take a deep breath. 
Think of something you're thankful for. And remember, it's a terrific Tuesday, and tomorrow's a wonderful Wednesday, and we're going to work together, and it's going to be a great week. I love you guys. Bye.